What's that? Have I done you a proper intro this week? Have I bollocks? Techspert Weekly! So thankfully this week wasn't as full on mental as last week as far as all the tech launch shenanigans goes, although to be honest it's kind of like comparing a violent bout of explosive diarrhoea to being punched square in the balls. They're both different, but they're both very likely to make me curl up in a ball on the floor crying until somebody fetches me a bottle of bourbon. Now first up, Google surprised, some of us at least, by finally launching the Pixel 5a and simultaneously horrified all of us stuck here on this side of the Atlantic by making it a US and Japan exclusive. At $450 dollar bills y'all, it's not particularly cheap, but it does offer a few upgrades over last year's Pixel 4a, including a metal IP67 design, a bigger battery and a Snapdragon 765G chipset. That said, it's no longer as hand-pleasing at 6.34 inches, while the camera tech is identical to that 4A, so you might as well basically just grab yourself a Pixel 4A 5G rather than buggering about with imports. So overall, this Google launch was sadly about as crowd-pleasing as that infamous undressing scene from the crying game. Or indeed about as crowd-pleasing as that movie reference right there, bang up to date as always. I'm assuming there's probably going to be a fair bit of YouTube searching and horrified reactions going on. Now following the launch of the Realme GT flagship smartphone earlier this year, we now have two fresh Realme GT handsets which, unlike that Pixel bugger, actually are coming to the UK, hip hip hazar. Although the Realme GT Master Edition and the GT Master Explorer Edition definitely win an award for the most clunky names of 2021. Both stripped back flagship sport slightly lesser specs than that standard Realme GT for a more affordable asking price. You may no longer get that Snapdragon 888 grunt, but these morphos are still more than capable when it comes to gaming, helped along by the vapor chamber cooling, while the AMOLED displays are pure eye candy as always. And I have done you fine 4K full unboxing of both of these smartphones as well. The Master Edition one should be live right now, the Master Explorer Edition will be coming very shortly, so stay tuned for that. Now this week also saw ASUS unveil a special limited edition version of its Zephyrus G14 laptop in collaboration with EDM superstar Alan Walker. He may have the kind of name that suggests Garden and Show presenter, but Alan is in fact one of those kids what wears a hoodie, but thankfully not one of the bad ones that pokes dog shit through your letterbox with a stick. Nope, he's far too busy mixing tracks and dropping beats and all of that kind of stuff. And he's also so incredibly wealthy that, let's face it, he'd probably just pay somebody else to do all the dog shit poking on his behalf. And I thought I'd try my hand at being a super cool DJ with that special edition G14 where the actual laptop box converts into your very own mixing deck of sorts. And you can see how I got on by watching my hands on video thingy what I'd done just for you because you're all so goddamn lovely and all. Warning though, contains explicit sock action. And this week, of course, naturally your great mates Motorola were back at it again, launching yet another Moto G series smartphone. Seriously, if Motorola was an illegal immigrant and the G series smartphones were its offspring, then the Daily Mail would be having an absolute sh** fit by now about how they all live in a luxury manner on taxpayers' money. The new metaphorical run in question is the Motorola Moto G60S, and the big whoop here is its fast charging support for that big 5000 milliamp battery which urinates merrily all over the charging speeds of other G series blowers and even the Moto Edge flagships. Finally, turbo power is actually worthy of its slightly overly dramatic name, providing a respectably impressive 50 watts of power when the phone's plugged in. Unlike most other Moto phones, the G60S rocks a MediaTek chipset, the Helio G95, backed by either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. You don't have any 5G support, but the phone should cope fine with everyday life and also a bit of light gaming. You've got a 64 megapixel primary camera, a whopper of a 6.8 inch IPS display with 120 hertz refresh, you've got a headphone jack, you've got expandable storage, and that lovely stock version of Android 11, so overall some pretty solid specs for the price. And that price is just 219 quid here in the UK, and if all of that has got you feeling all hot and giddy, well the good news is that the Moto G60S should be available to buy in the coming weeks. And also, can I just say, I absolutely need this guy's wardrobe. I'm not sure what era, if any, these threads would have been fashionable in, but this dude is pulling it off. Actually, while we're at it, I'll also have some of that luxuriously thick hair as well. No wonder he's grinning like a gator with a 12-foot member. And of course, naturally, that's not all the tech news from this week, because we also had a launch from fitness wearable Boffins Koros, who revealed the fresh new Vertix 2 smartwatch with some serious satellite tracking abilities. We're talking James Bond levels of global positioning here, perfect for when you get lost looking for the nearest Nandos. 
And I've actually had a bit of a play with the Chorus Vertex 2 as well. You can check out my video of that going live very shortly indeed. And yes, that did require me going outside to do a bit of jogging. And let me tell you, it took a few whiskeys and a deep fried cheesy chip butty to get over that one. Things I do for you lovely beautiful bastards. And frankly, that's about all of the fresh tech shenanigans I can be asked with this week, which means it's time for that part of the show that's generally about as well received as the Eaton Hunting Club's annual production of blasting small furry animals right in the face with a double barreled shotgun from about two foot away. It's fewer comments! Boo! Fewer comments! <laughs> Let's start up this week with Ali, who says, I'm all for a Mr. Wanksock game, I'd buy that. Yeah, I think this is my retirement plan. Right, I'll have to get straight on that. I mean, I haven't done any proper coding since I was like a proper tech support spod well back in the day now, but I'm sure I can cobble together a simple game where basically a sock puppet thing swears at you for a good couple of minutes until you get bored and shut it off. Uh, straight onto the booze talk, Mr. Gonzanator says, I remember the Centurion got to 60 before I had to call Huey down the porcelain telephone. Worst part was I was stone cold sober an hour later and I had a hangover which was no fun. Yeah, exactly the same experience, yeah. It's basically all of the worst bits of drinking alcohol uh, and none of the fun bits all crammed together in like a, a two hour period. They shouldn't call it the Centurion, they should just call it Massive Regret. Uh, next up, uh, Somalia says, having no smartphone launches in a week would be great. You're telling me, buddy. Uh, might mean an entire Techspert Weekly full of viewer comments though. Yeah, again, just like the Centurion, uh, all of the worst bits in one horrible package. Uh, Gary asks, how long does it take you to get a new phone set up? You must have it down to a science. I mean, yeah, you're 100% accurate. So, I mean, these days I could basically do it in my sleep with both of my hands violently sawn off at the wrists. It's kind of a shame, actually, there's no, like, Guinness Book of World Records achievement for fastest setting up of a phone or most phones set up within a, you know, a one year period or something. It'd be my shiny old slaphead right there on page 547. That is assuming that the Guinness Book of World Records is actually still a thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure the actual, the body that dishes out certificates for stupid shit is still a thing, but I'm not sure if you can actually still buy the book or is it all just on the internet now? I just remember getting that book every single friggin' Christmas, even though I never ever asked for it. And you know, I'd flick through it and just find like the grossest ones in there and then it would just sit in a shelf gathering dust. I also love the way every time you go into a charity shop, there's always at least 12 other buggers right there just from random years. Uh, but getting back on topic, the subject of setting up smartphones, all I can say is thank God for Android cloud backups because that really does take the pain out of it these days as uh, so you just, you know, you can get all your apps and stuff automatically downloaded from your previous smartphone. And then all you've got to worry about is, you know, setting up the fingerprint and all that kind of shenanigans. Uh, next up, Dave is here to the rescue. <laughs> Uh, clearing up a bit of confusion from last week, he says, I think a bishop is referred to as your grace. I mean, I really should remember this from all my many, many hours spent watching Father Ted uh, back in the day and everything. But anyway, to the, uh, to the bishop who wrote in last week, uh, many apologies, your grace, for saying naughty words like bollocks and jobby and f***ing <laughs> black bumhole. And next up, Kit, or Kite, uh, not quite sure on the pronunciation, says, I imagine your worst nightmare is James Corden dressed as Santa. Well, it friggin' is now. Thanks a lot for that, uh, that particular image. Jesus Christ, I mean, that is nightmare fuel right there. I would quite happily bludgeon that motherfucker to death with his own sack. Uh, it looks like we've got a, a tech uh, question slash comment here as well. Matthew says, the biggest thing I would be paranoid about is that the Samsung decided to go with the Snapdragon 888 for the Z Flip 3. The processor is well known to have heating issues and they didn't even manage to increase that battery size. You can guarantee the battery is going to be awful. Yeah, that thing probably is going to struggle to make it through the day. And as you see, even like normal uh, smartphones tend to heat up with that 888 stuffed inside. So I definitely would have preferred seeing like an 870 or something. Not that that would stop most YouTubers from spunking themselves into a frothy stupor over it all, of course, because, you know, foldable bendy phones, always an instant win. Um, and on, on that topic as well, uh, Negi, uh, again, sorry if I've uh, completely mauled that pronunciation, says, uh, why didn't you get the flip and the fold in for review? I mean, I think it's mostly because I keep telling the Samsung PRs that foldable phones are expensive and dumb. I mean, that's not entirely true. I do actually quite like the compact form factor of the Flip, uh, very similar to the Mortal Razor one that they did as well, of course. I mean, that, that's what I, I expect from a foldable phone, something that's gonna, gonna be really, really small when it's folded up and then become more smartphone-sized when you do uh, unfurl it. That just makes more sense in my brain rather than something like the Galaxy Fold, where it's, it's so friggin', like, why would you need a display that big? 
ever. The only time I would need a screen anywhere near that size is when I'm so pissed I can't even focus anymore. And next up, Adam says, like in the Honor Magic 3 series, it will be good to see what that phone is like, as I think it's the first phone coming to Blighty since Huawei and Honor parted ways. Uh, yeah, 100% correct. Um, in fact, the supply of Honor smartphones kind of died down to a trickle and then just dried up completely shortly after the whole Huawei blacklist and shenanigans. You can get those Google services on there. I'm just proper gutted that the new Honor smartphones uh, have got such crazy expensive asking prices. They're really going full on premium sort of flagship territory with those. Whereas the Honor smartphones always offered good value for money. You tend to get, you know, a lot of that Huawei hardware, really good premium stuff, but more of a sort of a mid-range asking price. Uh, which was always nice, but of course the competition in that sort of budget to mid-range realm now is just insane, certainly compared with when Honor was really ruling the roost, you know, a few years ago. Uh, next up, Leaky Pipes says, uh, great name by the way, uh, so many phones, I'll just stick to my three-year-old one, battery degradation is noticeable, but hey, it still does the job. A bit of Redmi 5 Plus action, classic. Um, yeah, I know quite a lot of people who've uh, got a Redmi phone or uh, just a Xiaomi phone in general and are still happy with it a good few years on, even though they don't tend to get the software support, unfortunately, so it's generally older Android and everything, but the hardware is generally so good that they sort of keep on uh, going strong. Uh, another tech one, bloody hell, lots of tech uh, comments this week. Uh, Dishwasher says, I'm trying to decide between the Galaxy A52 5G and the OnePlus Nord 2. Yeah, that is a pretty tough one. I really did like the OnePlus Nord 2, uh, but the Galaxy A52 5G does have the benefit of, uh, it's got a headphone jack, it's got the expandable storage, and it's got the IP rating as well. Um, but I would definitely go for the Nord 2 if you want to do any gaming or anything like that, because the performance is definitely better on that one. And uh, starting to run out of time now, so better uh, make this uh, the last couple. Uh, Christina says, which phone camera-wise would you recommend for a mother with a child that runs around a lot, not more than 700 quid? We well, certainly don't need to spend anywhere near 700 quid to get a decent camera phone uh, these days. Uh, the likes of the Pixel smartphones, for instance, even the Pixel 4a, which is super cheap these days. Uh, it takes stunning pics of kids, uh, you know, even when they're flapping about like absolute mentalists off their tits on Haribo and cake. You know, we've got some great shots of our kids uh, using the Pixel smartphone, just point and shoot, and it just creates some beautiful uh, portrait mode shots and all that stuff. And I've also had really strong results with the Xiaomi smartphones as well on a, you know, a fairly tight budget, the likes of uh, the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And the Xperia phones are great as well with the uh, eye autofocus, which, uh, you know, is perfect for really fast moving uh, subjects, uh, shall we say. But you do tend to have to actually dive into the manual controls to really get a good looking shot with those things. And last comment for the week, Etienne says, Skull, you posh sod, we had to put up with Kestrel and Mad Dog. Mad Dog? Well, I mean, what the actual f*** is that? That sounds effing horrendous. Okay, even though I am massively running out of time now, I absolutely have to Google this. Uh, okay, I thought it was a, a beer, but apparently it's flavoured fortified wine, uh, which, <laughs> I mean, that, that looks special. There is no way that anything you put inside your body should be that kind of colour. Right there, that green one looks like it will probably do some nasty things to your innards. But yeah, maybe I'll, uh, that's, that's what I can do to celebrate episode 100 of Techspert Weekly. Just smash back a bottle of that and see what happens. So as always, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Apologies if I didn't get to yours. Uh, always great reading those. Lots of fun times, uh, shits and giggles, etc. And just about enough time for me to have a quick look at next week, next week, next week. What the f*** is next week? And basically, we've got uh, some OnePlus shenanigans coming for you on Monday. Monday, so stay tuned for that and that's about it actually Touchwood not not really sure if there's any other tech launches going on just yet I say tentatively because I thought that this week would be fairly chilled and oh my god was it not we've also got full unboxings of the uh, the likes of the Motorola the Moto Edge 20 Pro coming your way as I say I'll get that uh, Realme GT Master Explorer edition uh, unboxing uh, in front of your faces soon. And please don't hate me, but unfortunately there's not going to be a Textbook Weekly next Friday uh, due to life shenanigans once again cropping up, but I'll definitely be doing one the following week. So again, please do bang your comments down below and we'll cover off as many of those as possible in a fortnight's time. So thanks very much for watching this barrel of bollocks right to the very end. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend and as always, love you!